true west is really about the desire of the tourists yeah. to have a true west. So instead of saying there's a real west out there and Tex is the authentic part of that real west, that real wild west and the way it was, what tended to happen was that Tex knew as a, you know, when, when Tex Wood was writing as Tex Wood, and I think he's just as real when he's Tex Wood as when he's Nello Vernon Wood. So that's the other thing. We're not saying that there's a real and a fake Tex or a real and a fake Nello. They're one of a piece, okay, depending on the situation. But one of the things that happens when Tex is talking is that he winks a little bit at his audience. And you can tell in terms of the way that he switches between different, way, different kinds of language that he'll do that. And it was pretty clear that his clients knew that he wasn't really a rough and ready Wild West character, that he was a gentleman of sorts. So they must have got it. But at the same time, the desire that those tourists had to experience wilderness, to experience something that they felt was being lost, which included experiencing what Aboriginal people might be doing. This connects the desires those tourists had um, to see a real West given to them by Tex Wood is connected to the desire to go to Indian Days, Banff Indian Days, which were running at the same time, and which Tex would have been part of. Um, the, you know, and, and Indian Days are also not authentic. They're also um, in Banff about performing a certain kind of Wild West for the tourists. Um, and everyone who's in those performances knows that, but it doesn't matter because it's fun. The contemporary um, example would be Disney World. Everyone knows that Disney World isn't real. It doesn't matter. And because it doesn't matter, the ideal replaces the real. This is another example of that same tendency there's no, you know, the desire to have an authentic or real Wild West overdoes any evidence that there isn't one. And that is still true today. Thousands and thousands of tourists come to Banff every year to experience the Canadian West. And, you know, and the Canadian West does get performed for those tourists who come from all over the world. Even if tourists realize on some level that it's not real, it's okay because it's interesting, it's entertaining. <laughs> One of the things that comes out in Texas writings and which I know also from simply from family history is that Banff was full of what we would perhaps today call Euro trash in the 1910s and 20s. It was full of people from all over the place, from all kinds of social backgrounds, including some quite uh, exalted ones. Uh, mainly impoverished people from uh, various parts of Europe who, uh, you know, had some fancy family but no money left. And they showed up in Banff and used their social capital, which they'd acquired because they had leisure, to do things like go, you know, learn how to climb, which was a gentlemanly activity. That wasn't something ordinary or poor people could do in the 19th century. Or to, uh, to learn how to ski. And these people then taught tourists how to do these things or guided them. Uh, one of Texas' abilities was with horses because he grew up with horses and so he helped to build the tramway in 1906 up to Lake Louise. That was I think one of his first jobs when he got to Banff.